Hey, folks, it's Ryan. It's so bad it's good. Uh, this Southern Charm recap of the most recent episode uh, will be on the podcast as well, but this is the part where I usually do where I say I'm about to hit record on GarageBand for the actual podcast. So this moment is just for us, the YouTube audience. So here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Bapa, do bapa, dee, dee, dee. We are back, folks, with an all-new Southern Charm recap. Now, um, Shep, if you're still listening, uh, we just did your interview. Please stop listening at this point because I do not want anybody to get their feelings hurt. Um, and you know what? I'm, I'm going to say my honest opinions and feelings. And I hope I hope you're OK. I hope everyone's OK. And I'm just going to be like, uh, OK, this is so uncomfortable. I'm going to bring on my Diana. Just, Hello, Shep. <laughs> OK. Um. Where do we start? Okay, let's start as we always do with the title. This is season eight, episode five. And that that is like, you got to think about that. Talking to Shep like kind of blew me away in the sense that he's done eight seasons of this show. And there is something weirdly not sad about doing the show because we would all like probably love to do something like this and have it be successful. But I mean, in times where you're breaking up with somebody and everybody's getting into your business, like if I've dealt with breakups or I've dealt with divorces and all that, I've had this kind of uh, amazing gift where I was a nobody. So the only people that were like, you know, in my business was my family and my ex you know, ex's family and things like that and, and close friends, but I didn't have like Bravo accounts and stuff like that, throwing your, their opinion in by what they see on TV now, but that's what we do. Right. And I always say there is so much truth to even the little things that we see on TV. You can talk about bad edits all you want. And that's a popular thing that people complain about, but at the same time, by some weird alchemy, the camera can pick up thoughts behind the eyes. It's the coolest thing. That's why movies exist. That's why TV exists because even when an actor or somebody in a reality show is quiet, the audience can pick up what they mean behind their eyes. So for the YouTube audience, um, this is me excited, me, me sad, me tentative. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can kind of tell human emotions and, you know, editing and things like that do like, I don't believe in Frankenstein editing where they take one, you know, clip of from one this and one clip from over there and make it so that they say something completely that they didn't say. But I think at this point, we've now seen enough human behavior from all of the Southern Charm cast members, maybe not the new ones, obviously. And I will say Austin, because, you know, you got to count Summer House and Winter House in there, that we know a little bit of these people's MOs. And talking to uh, Shep, you you know, you really do get the sense like that dude wants to be a nomad in some ways. He wants to be an adventurer. Craig says in this episode, he is a one man band. Now, listen, that could be really hurtful to Shep, especially at times like now, but like it could also be truthful. And if you accept that as truthful, and if Shep accepts that as truthful, there's beauty in that truth, right? He's just that you don't want to then lead other people on. And I, I do wonder, I wish I could talk to him right now because I would just really be curious of was this relationship some form of a test? Was there like a year in where you were like, no, this is it for me. And then realized that the person Shep's always been, you know, is still there and he can't really let that part of him go. Like there is something interesting and not just with Shep, but with guys in general. I don't know if girls so much, I can't speak for them, but I think we have this kind of weird thing a lot of the times. I don't know if it's weird per se, but there's this thing of almost like giving up. Like you, you know, I think guys feel like sometimes that, you know, if they're with somebody that they've given up on themselves, which is sometimes just a really interesting, weird, potentially dangerous way to think about these things because if anything, somebody new into your life should add so much value, should actually make you a better person. I hate to use that Jack Nicholson line from as good as it gets, but you know, you make me want to be a better man kind of a thing. Um, now the boy squad in Austin, you know, it's, a, it's tough times. You got Austin, you got Chubbs, uh, which is Caleb, which is Cleb. Remember Catherine's ex, Caleb, but we spell it C-H-L-E-B, but I get confused because dyslexia, so I just call him Chubbs. So Chubbs, by the way, Catherine's ex, not even in this episode until the preview for the next week. And I was like, is Chubbs just out? Like, I just, I started falling, I was just starting to get to know Chubbs, and now Chubbs is gone. But think about it. Craig is the only one in a committed relationship. Austin doesn't know which way is fucking up in terms of girls. Like, he's just like, eh. he, he wants 
credit for everything, single thing he does. And obviously the guy has been deeply scarred by his relationship with Madison. I'm not saying that's Madison's fault. I'm just saying he's been deeply scarred by it. And he carries that around so much so that it annoys every girl in his life. And then when he gets to other, like when he, it's almost like when he gets out of Charleston, he becomes like Don Juan. Like he almost has this power by crossing state lines that when he goes to a summer house or a winter house, he's like, let's go. Let's play butt bongo fiesta. Let's do this. All the ladies love me. I'm the, the, I'm the Austin I've always wanted to be like, you know what I'm saying? There's almost like a nerdy Batman element to it of like, he's able to almost play a cool guy because if he says in this episode, if we're to believe that's true, he said, Madison always told me I'm not, I'm not good looking enough. I'm not cool enough. Nobody likes me. So if you really are being told those things or even interpreting in that fashion, then you go to summer house and you have Lindsay and Sierra fighting over you. You're going to think you're King shit. And then that's why we've got to bring him down to earth, folks. <laughs> so this episode, you guys, uh, is called X's and Uh-Oh's. And I was like, you guys nailed it, Southern Charm producers. Uh, X's and O's is what that should be. But X's and Uh-Oh's means there's a mistake. Now, if we're taking X's, we're going to piece this together like the Da Vinci Code it has something to do with X's, right? Okay, so in my head, that's Madison, right? So this maybe is a Madison-inspired uh, uh, line and then uh oh is means the mistakes we've made so mistakes we made that could be madison's mistake he's making with olivia the new girl yeah, i mean it could be i just thought it was a very clever title so this one i actually i'm going to give it the so bad it's good stamp of approval uh they always show us a description on the cable tv you know like for people just passing by that have never seen southern charm before they'd be like oh honey what's this let's read the description and it says madison and vanita's party takes a turn for the worse Paige sets ground rules for her relationship with Craig. Hey, better late than ever. <laughs> uh, Shep struggles to get Taylor to trust him while he's away. And then the last one is Catherine sets up a girl's night out. And last week we left off with Madison and Vanita and it was their joint birthday party. But Madison did this interesting thing where she invited um, Catherine and Olivia who Vanita had some beef with a little bit, but didn't even ask Vanita, just invited them. So all of a sudden, Vanita doesn't even know they're th getting there until she gets to the party. So it's a wild thing. And listen, I got to be on it. Like, this to me feels very producer setup of like, I definitely think Vanita didn't know. But I also think they pull aside cast members and go, okay, Madison, we're going to need you to invite this person and this person. Because there's not a part of me that really does think somebody is that toxic. And if if Madison truly is, then Austin, you're right. But I think it's more of a producer going, we're trying to make a TV show. So wouldn't it be interesting if you did not tell Vanita that these two people she has beef with um, are, are coming to her birthday party. It just makes for a tragic, uh, a tragic couple of scenes that we're seeing play out. And remember, Miss Patricia is there. Even Miss Patricia is there because we ended with her line last week of like, no F words, no F words. Like, and Whitney had dropped her off in the Bentley. So we have the previously on Southern Charm. And Naomi is slowly getting into this kind of the feel of doing the voiceovers at the beginning. She'd be like, Craig and Austin, uh, golfing and you know talking about dragging their feet with olivia and we had that whole scene last week with the, it was the stupidest scene i've ever seen but also weirdly poetic on how two men cannot find the right text message to throw out to a lady <laughs> so they finally sent this text message so we see the little clip of uh okay good uh okay now we can go to my parents house to help them move up and craig is like yeah tell her how you feel and then run great line by craig actually and then the voiceover goes meanwhile taylor and shep taylor and shep's pregnancy scare opened up old wounds and we see that scene from last week where uh shep's at the the diner he's like apparently i'm not a safe bet and taylor's like well i think you're kind of not uh and then when madison and Benita decided to host a joint birthday party they were hijacked by someone's engagement. And of course, that was Madison's engagement. Of course, we get also then the song. Don't you know? Don't you know? And we open back up where we were last week. We're just right in it. I immediately remembered I didn't even need those scenes. That's how smart my brain's gotten where I can watch something seven days ago or even six days ago and then watch it six days later, a continuation. I'll be like, I remember this from six days ago. 
<laughs> but I'm telling you, Bravo, you're wasting good TV time by doing all of these flashbacks and all these like last week on Southern. Like, no, man, I'm in, I'm I'm if you're watching Southern Charm, I have a feeling you're in Southern Charm. And if you're not watching, a friend has gotten you to watch. And that friend needs like that's part of the service of turning your friends on to Bravo. You need to sit down with them and go, I want to watch this with you so you don't get scared. OK, see, now that is Miss Patricia. Patricia, uh, you know, she her son is Whitney. Whitney, you know, like you got to walk them through this. Like um, I'm imagining this is what parenting is is <laughs> that's what i imagine guys that's what i imagine parenting to be like please all the parents out there tell me if i'm wrong i think i'm probably dead on so uh oh sorry no we're still in those we're still in the scenes from last week but they just they pepper in that song don't you know don't you know and Vanita's telling Madison, what made you invite Catherine and Olivia? And then the voiceover goes, when Leva tried to mediate a truce. And it was at the last scene where Leva was like, okay, you go first and you go second. Let's work this thing out. And then the voiceover is like, it didn't go as planned. And that's Miss Patricia going, no half words, please. And then bop a doo, bop a dee dee. It's easy as the birds and the bees and the one, two, three. Mm -hmm. And then we open up Madison and Vanita and Leva's, Leva goes, can I, can I set the tone? Can I set the tone, please? Which, by the way, I've never said, can I set the tone in my life? You remember like how confident you've got to be to say, can I set the tone? I think that's amazing. Um, because she says there's times when these issues can get muddled into not understanding each other's personalities. Um, you know, and Vita, Vanita's personality is to speak that way, which is what we just saw her speaking to Catherine in a very confrontational way, uh, you know, very clear. Uh, she says, I can see how you're receiving it. She's telling Catherine, I can see how you're receiving that. OK, because you don't know Vanita that well yet. And Catherine's like, she doesn't know me that well yet either, which is totally true. Vanita says, I know everyone else at the table speaks to you that way, but I'm not doing that. So Vanita's getting real personal with Catherine of going, I know all these people think you're a fucking idiot, but I'm not at that point yet, but I do have some questions. Catherine says, you said earlier, I hope you're not raising your kids like that because that's the discussion they had. Because listen, at the end of the day, Vanita is still upset and doesn't understand why Catherine used the monkey emojis to respond to a fan which was part of the last season of southern charms overall plot line it's a really dark thing and that's why i always say with these conversations i'm so ecstatic that bravo is covering them but sometimes when they're this important you've just got to make sure the show is respected enough that it can hold the weight of these big conversations because not only are you taking us through this but we're watching sometimes you know it Catherine, sometimes it just does, and I'm not making excuses for, but sometimes things don't seem to click or connect, and the way she processes information is different than I think the way any of us process information, and I'm not making fun of that. I'm just saying it's just different, so it's a real put-on-the-spot moment, and I'm sure it's a conversation Vanita definitely didn't want to have at her birthday, but she's standing up for herself. Uh, it, it's one of those weird things, and the, the, this episode gets really fun or like a lot more kind of Southern charm -y, but it starts this way, which is just really heavy because we're back in this position again. And it's like, I want to know the answer. I want to, I want Benita to be happy. I want Kath. I want to know what Catherine, like, I still think it's the weirdest thing that she put those monkey emojis to begin with. Um, and Catherine says, um, yeah, I, you know, I hope you, you know, you said earlier, I hope you're not raising your kids like that. And then he's like, yeah. And she's like, that was fucking insulting to me. And then Catherine goes, F word, oops, shit. And everybody looks at Miss Patricia and Miss Patricia's like, no ass words either. So he said, no F word, no ass words either. And then Naomi laughs. And Taylor says, I'm so confused. What is going on? Can someone fill me in? And then we have uh, Catherine to Leva going, why am I losing my cool right now? And Leva's like, because you have emotions, girl. Guys, I'm like, listen, can we be honest here for a second? Like Leva has what we all know now is like a Vanderpump Rules style show based around her restaurant, right? Leva's been on a season and a third right now, like depending on how many episodes this season goes. And I still, do you think Leva can handle, like even if you hate Lisa Vanderpump or don't hate Lisa Vanderpump, you love her. Um, 
you, you still can't argue what she has done in the restaurant industry, what she had done at that point in the regards to being a housewife. And she really could launch that show. Is Leva, and, and listen, this is just going by what I am picking up on. Is Leva a big enough character? And even when she tries to get involved, I never feel like she fully does it well. Like sometimes I understand Vanita talking about these issues a little bit more than Leva. And I'm like, why are we looking to Leva for this when I feel like she confuses things? And she kind of seems like a little tipsy most of the time, which is also fun. And I love that. But if we're having these big conversations, I feel like Leva being the middleman between Catherine and Vanita is just a little off. And I, I could be completely wrong. And that's what's good about like we'll see in future episodes. But I did get worried. I'm like, we're handing a whole fran like a whole series over to Leva. And I'll be curious what her you know, what her part in that series is because she owns the restaurant. So Lev is like, it's because you have emotions, Catherine. And then Miss Patricia goes, Jesus Christ. And she grabs a bottle of champagne and Naomi's like, should I pour that for you? And she's like, yeah, otherwise I'll drink it from the bottle. And Leva says, hey, Catherine, stop being, you know, pulled off your cool. You know, don't be pulled off your cool. You're totally good. And uh, so then Vanita goes to Olivia from like, Catherine's situation is calming down, I guess, and goes to Olivia and says, I, can I talk to you if that's all right? You know, and uh, Vanita goes, I want to make sure we both understand each other. So they get up to talk. And I'm like, is this, this feels weird. And this feels not organic in any way. And I almost, I felt for both of these ladies in this scene because I felt like, really, we're just, we, I mean, I know this is a TV show and that's what we're doing this, but it kind of takes away from the actual party aspect of this. And then Madison gets to skate. And this is why it's such a big problem. Madison should be the one Vanita should be pulling aside. You know, like Madison is the one that kind of created this. So they go and... um Vanita, well, like Olivia kind of looked tentative and Vanita kind of throws in a, don't worry, you got it. And Olivia goes, I know I got it. Thank you for the confirmation. Which, dude, I mean, that is kind of gross of Benita, Benita going, you got it. You can do it. And it's like, uh, that's not cool. And then uh, Miss Patricia goes, drinks up, ladies, drink up. And uh, Benita goes, I want to know at my party that I'm good with everyone at the table. And Olivia's like, well, at Naomi's party, I got, uh, I got, you know, I felt like ganged up on by three women, you know, walking out of the bathroom at Naomi's. I had three girls up in my face. You know, it's a little different. Um, and then Vinny goes, besides that, you told me to calm down that night. And Olivia's like, I didn't say calm down. I I, I put a hand in your face, <laughs> which, by the way, they do a flashback and we do see she did say to calm down. Um, and then she goes, you know. I kept it cool, Vanita says, and she was, you know, listen, you threw out the word racist that night, and we get the flashback of Catherine being called a racist, and she not being around to stick up for herself, and she goes, I'm, I'm not going to stick around to, to be called racist or not racist, and Vanita says, explain to me that you're not. And that's a really tough line. Like, listen, because you can't help but get defensive, and I'm not trying to explain Olivia's actions, but listen, like... I think people hear racist in this day and age, and it's a very real, real thing. But I think we personalize it to such a degree because it is such a real thing. And we're like, no, 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 no. Ah. And listen, a goofy white kid, middle class, like uh, the, I'm probably not the person to explain any of this shit to you. And I should have an expert on again to kind of even walk me through this. But I can see where people get defensive. I can see where that is. And it, it just... It's a really, it's, it's going, it's continuing to be this frustrating topic for Vanita, for Olivia. And it's like, I, I, I want to know the right things to do, you know? Um, so she says, here's the deal. I was uncomfortable with hearing that word so easily tossed out in a conversation, Olivia says, that involved me. And you and I have known each other for like five minutes and I'm checking out because you know, that's not cool. It's a, I don't want to, you know, if you're, you're going to all of a sudden discuss cancel culture me out on that. And Vanita goes, if I had the culture, she would not be here. And that was in a talking head. And then we cut to the girls watching this conversation between Vanita and Olivia going, Oh, something's going on over there. And uh, Miss Patricia is trying to call Whitney. I'm like, Whitney, come get me. Whitney, please save me. And Madison's like, FaceTime. Like, I don't know how to FaceTime. And Madison's like, I'll do it. And then Madison's like, Whitney, you got to pick up your mom. Yeah. You know, and he's like, oh, I'm just at home team barbecue. I just sat down. And Madison's like, well, you got to leave and come and get her. 
So we cut back to that conversation and says, you will never understand what it's like for Catherine to do those things and be in her presence, Vanita says. And Olivia says, I have nothing to do with that though. That's stuff between y'all. And Vanita says, but address it instead of walking away. And she said, there are, there are some things you and I don't, um, you know, don't need to get into about this. And Olivia says, uh, you know, I, I once again says, you know me for less than five minutes. And she goes, and you've known me for less than five minutes. And then Olivia's like, but I'm not the one making these claims. And then Vanita goes, can I talk to you without interrupting me? Let me say my piece. Now that's another, like, by the way, this is from like Olivia's standpoint and Vanita's standpoint, you're doing both triggering words to each other. Um, you know, Olivia put hands in Vanita's face as to calm down, horrible right here. Vanita saying that, that thing can, do you need to let me speak? Let me say my piece. When, if you go back, you know, they are both saying things, but when you say that it immediately makes somebody super defensive too. So Olivia goes, no, I think we're done. I think you had another agenda for this conversation. And my agenda was just to talk about the issue at hand, which by the way, tell me you guys, what is the issue at hand? I'm even getting confused. Like what's the issue at hand that Olivia stood up for Catherine a little bit at Naomi's party. Like, I mean, listen, Olivia kind of seems like a, you know, a what neither here nor there kind of person, you know, like, I don't even know who she really is. Catherine, I can see what that discussion is. I truly see what that discussion is. This is a little hazy for me. And I could be alone in those thoughts. Um, so, uh, but goes, no, talk to me right now. If you're willing to talk, you know, we're talking right now. And then Olivia's like, let's just go finish the party. And then Vanita's like, but we have to have a real conversation. This didn't get us anywhere. And Olivia's like, no, it didn't. They come back and Vanita says, yeah, I think we said all we needed to say for today. Vanita says in a talking head, none of this would have happened if Madison hadn't invited these two girls. We could have had a Southern moment if she wasn't trying to start drama like she always does. Now that to me, is the key to all of this. That to me is who Vanita, I think, should have talked to or Madison should have talked to Vanita in the first place. To me, that is the offensive thing really at this present moment. And Madison just skates away with it. Listen, I like Madison, but she sk skips away with it. And Miss Patricia goes, are we through with this? And Benita's like, okay, you ready to go? And, and Miss Patricia's like, absolutely. And we see the birthday cups, cupcakes being brought out. Vanita, uh, isn't like Vanita's blows out by itself. She's like, we gotta, we gotta light mine first. And, you know, Madison's, you know, as happy as a pig in shit. She's like, Woo! and Vanita says, all I want to do is go home and cry for 30 minutes. Cause like at the end of the day, that's not how you want to spend your birthday. Like having to have these like really kind of tough conversations out of like, and you didn't even expect these people to be there. So they're like, happy birthday to you. And like Vanita's kind of just looking off into the distance. And I just, it makes you think, how many times people, or even in your own experience, you guys, how many times you are like that in your life where you just want to go home. You just, you, I mean, it's just too much. It did not go the way that you thought it would go. So um, moving on, finally, thank goodness. Uh, she says, uh, uh, Craig and Paige, you guys, the couple with the most. And let me tell you folks, they're not in bed this time. They are in front of their bathroom sinks, brushing their teeth. The, the sign of a good relationship is people that have good dental care together. I think we all can agree on that. But I was just really happy to see Paige, uh, not horizontal, uh, standing up. I mean, it's a weak stance, but she didn't look like she was about to fall over. And that's what we need. Paige to just practice standing a little bit every day. Like start with five minutes, maybe challenge yourself to 10 minutes the next day. Pretty soon, you're going to be able to stand for at least an hour at a time. Um, so they're doing their little brusha 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 and craig's like you spit you spit halfway through and uh he's like no it's fine i just don't spit halfway through which i'm like what do you mean craig like you do you brush your teeth and you don't spit until the very end so all the dirt and plaque you're getting off your teeth you're just rolling it around in your craig mouth like tell me that's not what he meant you don't spit and then Paige says um in my head in my head i went to a sexual place page you know spitting out like when are we as adults going to be able to make spit jokes again without having it be about oral sex i think now is that i hope it's on the ballot in 2024 um 
So uh, we cut to Marcy, Shep's cousin, remember, pregnant. They're trying to introduce her as a character. She's trying to put on her shoes um, over her baby. Like she has a baby bump. She's trying to bend down. It's kind of like my gut. And she's she's like, oh, my God, my feet are swollen. And then we cut to Taylor and uh, Shep. And they're at his house. And she's got like a basil plant. And she's like, uh, I got to feed Tim the plant. Um, and, and give him good compliments, Shep. And Shep's like, Tim is growing emotionally like that's that should help him grow and you just i mean even in that little scene right there it's like chef's not the guy that wants to talk to plants i mean unless you know they're a c cup hey oh sorry so sorry chef if you're listening i i I'm, i want to do mushrooms with you um then we cut back to craig and Paige, and they're in a little golf cart so i guess it's like a golf cart town where he, you know craig has a little golf cart and he's like king of the golf cart people and Paige is in the golf cart with craig driving around their neighborhood and he's like i love this neighborhood the community really decorates well dude that's another thing i've never said like i've never said this community decorates well like i can't even clean my room and like i've never i've never looked down my street and go i wonder if this community decorates well like i <laughs> i just look down um Craig in the talking head says having Paige here is the best, you know, I'm missing her more and more when she's gone. And, uh, Paige uh, says in the golf cart the other night, you said you wanted to have a million Christmases with me. And Craig goes, I say really cute shit to you when I'm drunk. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, when you're drunk, you do say really cute shit. Now that's cute right now. They're still early on in the relationship. Now, eight years in, I don't know if Paige is going to think it's as cute when Craig's like, I would like to celebrate Hanukkah and Christmas and Kwanzaa with you. Blah. Give me a Jaeger shot, Paige. You know, but it's like cute right now. And also Craig is one of those men. I'm like this a little bit too, that if you have a couple of drinks, you're, you feel more confident in saying what your heart feels. You know what I'm saying? Like, you you know, like I am a very romantic person if I've had a couple of drinks because I, I feel like I am like that in my head. This is the dangerous part about alcohol or any substances. You know, you if you're like, oh, it puts me in touch with my feelings because I'm so scared to say my feelings otherwise. Okay, you guys, I gotta go. I gotta talk to my sponsor. This is great. <laughs> so in a talking head, Craig goes, I've never felt this way before. And when I think about who's walking down the aisle with me, it's Paige amazing sentiment very romantic i'm assuming he's sober and that's cute shit right there but i will say this how many guys out there listening all five of you have pictured who will be there so in craig's head he's standing at the aisle in his fantasy and now in his fantasy it's page like he's it's always Paige when she gets down to the end of the aisle. Like it could have been somebody else, but it, like your fantasy surprised you of like, holy shit, that's Paige the Sorbo. <laughs> holy shit, Paige, it's my girlfriend. Did not expect that in my fantasy. Wow. Um, you know, like I I have been married and I wanted to get married, and I have no problem with marriage. I mean, I guess the state of California would say otherwise, but I never fantasized like of me in a tux and who would be meeting me down the aisle, you know, like it was more fantasies about like, how am I going to live the rest of my life? <laughs> like, with, do I eventually live behind the grocery store and the alley? Like those were the fantasies or nightmares I had, but like, I love that Craig and this really kind of lines up with who Craig is and who we believe him to be and why is sewing. It's like always very sensitive is that he truly, I believe has had multiple fantasies about walking down the aisle. In fact, I think somebody told me on his podcast or maybe one of his live shows that supposedly he already um, he already got Paige a ring or something, but he, he knew he wanted to wait till it was after a year. So let's kind of put a date on when we think that actually is going to happen. And if they try to do it or base it around like a time when it's like good for both of them publicity wise. I hate to say that, but I think these Bravo Lebs sometimes really, you know, publicity wise, it ma it matters to them, you know? Um, so uh, they go to this place to have some drinks and, you know, Paige is like, how was Austin the other night? He's like, oh, he's good. You know, he wants to, you know, he wants to take me and Shep to his parents' house next week. And, you know, Austin found about, 
you know, Madison getting engaged and he played it off really well, you know, and I know, I know when she got engaged, Austin was going to freak out and Paige says, dude, the last person I'm going to be thinking about when I get engaged is the person I, I dated before. And she goes, Charleston is a weird place. And I got to tell you that Paige is dead on right. Listen, if you're getting, I, but at the same time, I kind of saw both sides because I do worry about other people. Like if I ever did ever get engaged again, of course I wouldn't worry about my ex. Like I don't want to hurt any, like I know I, I wouldn't, you know, like you wouldn't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but I get her point because that moment should be about the two of you and not all the people that you've left behind that you're worried about. And I also agree with her that I think Charleston potentially is a very weird place. And he's like, yeah, smallest town ever. I mean, fuck, he's driving around a golf cart. Last episode, Shep was like, like low boarding on a skateboard when Taylor was dragging him along on a bike. Which, By the way, how is Shep getting to restaurants now? Who's pulling his skateboard? Sorry. Um, he's like, uh, Craig's like, hello, I went to a party at Naomi's and like, it was all our friends and like, it would have been weird for me not to go. And Paige is like, right. I totally get that. Um, you know, the group setting all day. She goes group setting all day, <laughs> but I think being cordial and being friends are two very different things. Finally, Paige has gotten her head in the game. I've been telling you the last seven episodes going like, when is Paige? Like, how did Craig magically with this, you know, we weren't official yet. And we were, you know, we were still dating, you know, that Paige has been kind of like weirdly cool or blaming other people instead of Craig for any kind of weird interaction romantically. And now, now we finally see Paige either this is a plotted wake up and, you know, or she's finally truly waking up of like, what the fuck are you doing, idiot? And uh, she's like, Craig says, yeah, I wouldn't say friends, but like me and Naomi, we've been broken up for five years. And like, you know, what if we went, I mean, what if we went to lunch? By the way, they, I'm telling you now, they will go to lunch. In fact, when Craig said this, probably the producers wrote, lunch with craig and naomi make sure this happens and Paige goes no that would be crazy i wouldn't go out with someone i've previously slept with on a one-on-one -on -one lunch and he goes i'm not gonna get my nails we're not gonna get my nails done our nails done together which that kind of was a great line because it just really zeroed me in that craig has a nail person i was like oh my god craig does have a nail person and uh, he's like we're not going to be like gal pals like go to a restaurant like i was just in a restaurant during a day and just have like one drink and say what's going on now it takes a brave man to introduce that topic watch his girlfriend not be cool with it and also go i would just have one drink <laughs> I mean, just, it, it was like, you could have just said, like, it's not drinking, but he goes, I would have one drink <laughs> because I want to, I'd still need one drink. And then, you know, he's going to get there. He's like, I hope the drink's this big. And it's like a thirst buster size, like Chablis. Um, and she goes, no, I think hanging out with an ex one-on-one -on -one while you're dating someone is inappropriate. And Craig says, well, I guess that's just the lawyer in me. Like, that's why I'm fighting it. And Paige is like, well, that's the Italian in me would tell you no. And Craig's like, okay, that's fair. In a talking head, he goes, look, I get it. I would be that way. It's like shady, I guess, to hang out with Naomi. It was shadier to hang out with her than my college friend, I guess. And I guess you can't hook up with someone recently and then hang out because that's the truth. He fucked Naomi two times. Like recently. And I love that he's like in the talking head. He goes, yeah, I guess like we did just sleep. I did just put my penis inside and around her on her belly, you know, on her face. All this stuff. I put it everywhere. So, yeah, I now seen more of what Paige says. And then he goes to Paige. He goes, I like the Italian. It's the unique things about you. I find really cute about you. You mean your heritage? Like her hair? Like that's a, you got a really cute heritage. I love it. Makes you hairy. And then she goes, uh my you feel really my unique things about me that you find really cute and she goes like murder and i'm like okay stassi bust out the ranch dressing we cut to the town austin's walking on the street got purpose in his step he goes to charleston beer works how many fucking beer places are there in charleston it feels like for every it feels like a starbucks like like you see a starbucks on like every two street corners in los angeles Charleston, it has to just be like breweries. Um, he's like, one trop pop he orders. And it's like, up oh, first and last trop pop sold of the day at the Brew Works. I'm joking. I hear it's good. Olivia comes out and he, she goes, you look handsome. And he goes, they're finally doing a date, you guys. She goes, he goes, I wore high tops for you. And she goes, I love it. 
And she goes, my weakness is sneakers and a hat. And he goes, I know. Like, isn't that amazing that her weakness is somebody just dre- dressing lazy? You know, like he put on some jeans, a backwards baseball cap and sneakers. And that's somebody's weakness. Like I'm truly, my dream girl is somebody that like finds it attractive that I just have trash laying around my body at all times. Like, oh, that's my weakness. A trash can, man. Oh, well, you're in luck. <laughs> Um, she orders a Chardonnay, you guys, and they order tachos, which I'm guessing are taco nachos. And we don't really clarify this point, but I did spend the rest of the episode thinking about tachos. And if taco nachos aren't what that's inferring to, we do need to make taco nachos, you guys. And uh, she goes, well, I'm glad we're finally doing this, you know, without friends, you know, hanging around with us. And uh, he's like, yeah, yeah. I was thinking like that too. He's like, we're meeting by ourselves. Like where's we're Shep and Taylor. And, and then he's like, uh, when did you see the girls last? And she's like, Oh, I saw all the girls at the, uh, Vanita Madison combined birthday. And, and, you know, which means Olivia just said, Austin safe word, Madison, Madison. Um, she says, um, uh, she's like, and then he's like, oh yeah, combined birthday. I bet, I bet Madison was all like, make it about me, me, me. Don't forget I got engaged. Tell me how wonderful I am. Even though her engagement has to be like a subtle dig, you know? And it's like, it's truly, he's like pointing out a multiverse of mistakes. And I even knew as a, a, an idiot that this was not the move. And Olivia's just drinking and she goes, note to self, never bring up Madison on a date and a talking head. And he goes, not to harp on this, but like she had me convinced I wasn't funny. I was, which I wasn't funny. I was like, she might have been right on that one. I wasn't good looking. I wasn't tall. Now that would have been the one I was like, you're definitely tall. There's no argument there. I wasn't likable. People thought I was an asshole. And I'm like, did they watch this season of Summer House? And Madison, uh, he goes, well, I just hate our shit has so much. No, she goes, Olivia goes, well, I just hate our shit has so much to do with Madison. And he goes, it doesn't, babe. (laughs) We're just going to spend every first part of our dates talking about her. But other than that, totally chill. It's all about us. And she goes, I can't even go on a normal date with you. And then he's like, you can call it like PTSD. Like now he's a veteran. You can call it like PTSD or whatever. I served in... uh, Served in the battalion fighting Madison, you know, in the last couple of years. I was so vulnerable with my last relationship. It was like emotional whiplash. Now, usually when Austin says something like that, I, I believe at Winter House or Summer House, people are like, oh, let me cuddle you. But this, like, Olivia's like, fuck this. And a talking head, she goes, the fact of the matter is, oh, sorry, Austin goes, the fact of the matter is we were together for three years. It sucks to show that you're bothered. It's a total sign of weakness. I know, I know. It looks like I'm pretty weak. And I totally, I totally get that. And I fucking hate that, that it's spilled over into this. And uh, so he says all of this and it's like, totally get that. We, I think if you're a dude or like, we've all been in a place like that where you're just not on your game, but of course you shouldn't be dating during that time. And also on top of that, you shouldn't be sleeping with others and then getting them upset. Like you did, you laid wreckage to our summer house, our precious little summer house. And Austin goes, I just want to take it slow. And she goes, that's okay. I'm not trying to lock it down. I'm not one of those girls. In a talking head, she goes, I like Austin, but having this conversation is a little too presumptuous, I think, for our first date. You know, why are we even having this conversation? And he goes, I know it seems like we're playing, I'm playing games, but I'm trying to do the exact opposite. I like that it's like a science experiment for him. He's like, I've never put this chemical with this chemical. Will I be able to keep my penis in my pants? Sorry. Um, and then she goes, he's overcomplicating the fact and he shouldn't, you know, we can just have fun. I get it. We all had our bad breakups, but you can't let your past issues creep into your next situations. And I'm like, damn, another woman that is smarter than Austin. Like that is just, she, and I don't think it's her, like, I think women have this unique ability to really kind of laser like focus on, on how things actually are. And we're just so stuck in our man feelings and like, it doesn't feel weird. I don't feel good. One girl hurt me. And he goes, where does this leave us? And she's like, I don't know. And uh, he's like, can I, will you still touch my penis? We cut to Marcy uh, and, you know, she's, it's like a pregnant scene. Uh, Shep's, um, you know, cousin. 
She goes, people ask me if I feel prepared. Who knows? I've never felt prepared in my whole life. I'm hormonal. I'm nesting. If a room is perfect, I guess I'm going to be prepared. Her mom calls and uh, she's like, mom, I'm trying to put together this gray co baby swing. I thought like, why is so weird that they named the product name? Like, are they getting that for free? And that's why she named it. Like, it'd be funny if every Marcy scene was like, and this Fisher price play set um, that's, and also retails for nine ninety nine. <laughs> Sorry, spelled. I'm a man, Shep. If you're still listening, I just belch uh, like a man. Um, she's like, I'm so excited to have the baby, but I set up the crib and I don't even have a crib mattress. And the mom's like, first baby jitters. And she goes, oh, they told me to read this book, The Womanly Art of Breastfeeding. I've read it twice. It's amazing. It's like a Lord of the Rings saga. <laughs> she goes, it's 500 pages. I can't read. I have ADD. I can't focus. And mom goes, all the women in the early days never had a book. Which, by the way, that got me thinking, which I was like, oh, oh, my God, imagine that first woman that didn't have the book has the first baby and like all of a sudden milk starts coming out of their nipples. Like I would fucking freak out. Like if anything other than pee or the other thing comes out of my wee wee, like it's like bad news. Like it's like not good. So imagine that first lady that and that's whoever that lady, uh, let's call her Victoria, whoever Victoria. Thank you for your service. What an amazing, like, and how do you even find out that, oh, that's meant for the baby? Like, how did they all put that together? Like, I would have been, I would, that baby wouldn't have been 18. And I've been like, holy shit, that was milk. I'm finally getting it. Um, so we see pics of Marcy and her mom throughout the years. They're, uh, they're very close. And she goes, but my mom's very Southern, Southern tradition, Southern way. So when John and I weren't married and I was pregnant, you know, I told her sheepishly and she was like, wait, what? what? No, you need to get married. And so we got married really quickly. We had a priest there. And then she was like, whoo, I'm having a granddaughter. I can tell everybody. And I was like, that's so dark. Like these Southern traditions, it, you know, just because you said something tradition doesn't mean we have to keep doing that. It doesn't mean it's right. You know, if you say tradition, like I have a tradition of like, you know, not being able to process milk. Like that doesn't, that, that means I shouldn't, you know, that mean, doesn't mean I keep drinking milk and then just not process it. Well, it means I shouldn't do that anymore. You know, I'm a damn genius. This could be the best podcast I've ever done in my life. She goes, this is my, this is the fascinating part of this though. She goes, it's kind of a double standard in our family, you know, is that they were always worried about me. You know, always worried about me that I wasn't married, that I didn't have a kid, but Shep was partying so hard. And we see a flashback of Shep doing downing shots and no one ever said anything to him about that. And, you know, it's weird. I'm still the same person, but now I'm pregnant and married and they look up to me now and they respect me. Like I just won the Pulitzer. Like I'm just having a baby. Thanks. To me, that was such an interesting little piece of information. And it really kind of gives perspective on that whole family, Austin, everything. Then she then reverts back to typical and goes, will you buy me a stroller, mom? Can you do the most expensive one? She's like, yeah, I can do that. We cut to Vanita's house. It's very fancy. Everything's well-placed. We meet Charles, her dog. Napkins are set up, a tea set for Leva's arrival. And she lets us know she's super particular. Um, and I got to say, this was a point too, that I was like, let's see more of Vanita's friends. If you're going to introduce somebody, don't make them just do the heavy lifting of having hard conversations. Let me get to know them. Like, I know she's an influencer, which by the way, isn't it weird that Vanita might influence on actual real events more than like what summer top to wear? And I'm not a girl. So it's like, that shit just goes right over my head with influencer lifestyles somehow. Um, or, and I totally get why. And and I, I'm trying to respect that every, like people really genuinely do it, love uh, influencers, but then it always like you get to be tanks and it's just like so stupid. And you realize how, you know, it's like influence your own life and influ like influence people like good things to like, like a quest for knowledge. I'm going to, I'm going to shut up now. Um, so uh, she says, I need to know where everything is, every moment, every moment of my life. And that's when I personalized it. And I was like, oh, Vanita would hate me. So she's like, if the onion salt is not put back, back alphabetically, it'll screw everything up. And, uh, the producer goes, do you think you have a problem? And she goes, it depends on what you define as a problem. And she goes, I just want things to look super neat. You know, uh, I, I, doesn't everybody want that? Leva comes in, they go, uh, we see actually a pillow on her couch that says, why can't we have nice things? And I was like, is that a Conover original? 
Uh, she turned her dining room into a closet, folks, and they have to walk through that to get to the kitchen. And Lev is like, you're a girl after my own heart. Girls! Eh. And then we see her Barbie collection. She lets us know she has 27 Barbies. She leaves them in the box because all good collectors do know that you have to leave them in the box, even though sometimes with my action figures, I want to play with them so much. And that's so sad as an older man, but like, I was like, take the Batman out. But by the way, this, anybody from Bravo, Funko, anybody listening, I'm asking this for the millionth time, please give me fucking action figures. You know what I would do with like a season two Vanderpump rules action figure set with like a bar or like Tom Sandoval's shitty apartment. I'd be like, Hey, Kristen, you want to come watch drive tonight? Sandoval's going to bed early. Wink. Like, you know what I like? I want that so bad. Like, I like, I feel like there's a market for it besides just me, but it's probably just me. Um, Leva goes, how are you? And uh, she's like, I'm so sorry for the, uh, the, the party, you know, what I, what I had said to get all that stuff going. And we need to go, how are you? And she goes, no, in the spite of uh, I'm real. So in the, in the spirit of realness, let's fix it. You know, remember I was the hostess and uh, you know, it's all one thing, you know, my feelings got so strong because I don't have one-on-one so this is Benita saying this I have to jump at the party and that's when I get to speak and so then you really get to see more of Benita's perspective that this isn't cool like it's like uh yeah she does get the this is the moment she gets to speak and she's like I want uh, I wasn't my best self I wasn't my most open she says and with Olivia you know there has to be a super honest conversation and now I'm guarded again, and I, I just keep kind of skirting the issue. Once again, it's like one of those things that I'm really trying to uh, figure out what 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 is going on. Like what what is, I feel like I'm missing a piece between Olivia and Vanita. You know, like I, I truly am, and I'm I might have slept on it, but I have been recapping the show, so I just I hate that I've missed this big moment. Um, in a talking head, she goes, "I wish I went down." Um, I wish what went down with Olivia went down differently, tenfold. Like I definitely step into the situations wrong 99.1% of the time. Another thing I love about Vanita is she does even admit like when she didn't do something great, you know, like that seems to be everybody's problem. It's like really hard for people to admit that they're wrong sometimes or that they even played a part in awkwardness. Levis says, just open up. That's the person I know, you know, like just be you, uh, you know, in a talking head, she says, as an adult, I know I have to be okay with, um, you know, some things, but that doesn't mean they hate me. How do I work on that? With I don't know. I think that line I wrote down so sloppily that I don't know what that means. I'm so sorry. Um, she says, where is this going? And are we going to keep this going and have a friendship in regards to Olivia? Vanita says, and Leva says, but you don't want to be fake and not address it. So then we cut to Austin's car. Shep comes up ready to go on the road to Charlotte. Craig comes out too. And they're like, Shep goes, should I drive? And they're like, no, 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 I'm not driving. So Craig drives and we see three hours and 20 minutes of Charlotte. And Shep, uh, they say, Shep, I'm still scarred when you try to drive us to the Hamptons. And I threw up, Craig says. And Shep's like, I don't like to drive. And Craig goes, yeah, I threw out, threw up out the window. And in a talking head, even Austin goes, Shep's an awful driver. Shep terrified me. And he's like, all on the accelerator or all on the gas or on the brakes. And Shep in a talking head goes, they're effing liars. Um, and he goes, if your parents uh, sold the house, where are we staying? And Austin goes, uh, hey, I got three rooms in a nice hotel, which uh, translates to production got us three rooms in a nice hotel. He's like, but I'm going to leave you boys because I got a big meeting with Harris Teeters. And I guess this is his grocery market chain. Ronnie Karam told me about it. And he's like, there's 158 teeters in that area. And that's a hell of a lot of volume for my shitty beer. Today's a big day. And Austin goes, um, they're driving. Craig's driving. And he goes, hey, Craig, don't play that game of letting guys in. And I'm like, Austin, are you an asshole on the road? Not just in Summer House. You're also mean to other drivers. Don't let pe- Don't play that game. Don't let people in. How dare you, Austin? That's gross. They're not doing a little switching music bit. And this is sad because they don't, they don't have licensed music. So you know this is even what they're listening to. So it's like, but ding 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 ding. And Shep goes, Craig is like, turn it. And Shep's like, it's not uplifting enough for Craig. And they're like, nah, 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 nah. and they're like, no, no. And then it's like, ha, ah, do, ba, do, 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 do. And Craig's like, yeah. It's 55 minutes of Charlotte. Shep says, tomorrow I'm going to be eating lunch with my nieces. And Austin goes, you're going to tell them that you they almost had another cousin? Hey-o! 
And Austin says, I would be totally into you guys, you and Taylor doing that. And Shep goes, oh, so you can rub it in my face when you go out and get girls? And it just goes to like really just nail it in is that these guys fancy themselves as hunters. I don't mean for animals. The animals are the women. Like they truly feel like you're going to go out and get all the good women when you go out hunting at night. It really sometimes takes on that thing. And listen, I am not the dude to like tell you how it really is because like I didn't go quote unquote hunting unless you thought hunting was going to like sketch comedy, like Upright Citizens Brigade or Improv Olympic or any of the other nerdy shit I did. And in fact, I went to more gay bars than I did straight bars because my best friend was gay. Like it was like hunting, but you really, you see what that's like is that that's really kind of a fun game that good looking guys play. Um, and he goes, I want to have a bachelor party though. And Craig goes, no one's going to survive that bachelor party. And they all laugh. Ha ha bros for life. Let me be part of your bros. Chef. Please let me, uh, they get to Charlotte. Hello, Charlotte, Austin's former hometown. And Austin goes, I know, man. We check in at Ivy's hotel and Shep's like, Shangri-La. Uh, they all check into their own separate room. Craig immediately opens a bottle of wine. <laughs> Shep gets into his peanuts. Austin showers. It's uh, very average. And, uh, you know, Austin's getting ready. He's like, my hair's pissing me off. And uh, he's like, should I wear a hat? Is it just me because I'm, I'm nervous? I don't know. And it's like a huge move for me. It's a much bigger market than Charleston he says to us. And Austin goes to, to Craig's room. He's like, Hey, should I tuck my shirt in or out? And Craig's like, tuck it in. You're there to do business. And I'm like, mind blown, dude. I'm like, fuck, this dude has an answer for everything. Tuck in. But then did you notice he has like some like macrame belt? It was like, maybe leave it a little out too. Cause it wasn't like a, it was like a, you know, a, kind of like a little bit of a hippie belt. I dug it, but if you're meeting with Paris teeters, of Teterboro or wherever it is, Shep calls Madison. He's like, hey, babe, where are you? And she's like, I'm at your place cleaning up. And he's like, what? You're at my place? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I got, you know, you know, in his head, he's like, I got her trained well. And then he goes, hey, will you steal some of my forks? I have too much. What a weird request. That also leads me to believe that Shep just steals forks at local establishments. Because what other reason would he have that many? Like, why is he have that many? Why is he telling people to steal forks? Shep, if you're listening, why? that's another question. I'd wish I had seen this episode before I talked to you. Um, so uh, <laughs> this is the other. She's like, how was the drive? And he goes, Craig drove. And Taylor goes, Craig's, Craig's a great driver. He's an exceptional driver. And Shep goes, he's like Rain Man. Excellent driver. I'm an excellent driver. Bro. Did you just drop a Rain Man 1987 film with Tom Cruise and Dustin Hoffman autistic move like film about autism on Taylor, somebody that is way younger than you? Did Taylor get the Rain Man reference? Like, honestly, like he was like, ha ha, because for me, I'd be like, fuck, yeah. Did you just drop a Rain Man joke? And I would have loved it. But Taylor, you know, like, does she get a rain? Did she has she watch? Rain? No offense. I'm not saying she's not a movie buff, but like, you know. It's what I was talking about earlier with the Beyonce and all that shit. Like, I just feel like maybe I'm just way past the point of knowing what's cool. And uh, so then we go to Craig. He's laying on his bed with his feet kicked up like a little girl. He's like, Hee! he's like, hey, baby. And she's like, what are you doing, you smoochy boochies? And he's like, Austin got his hotel. and We're going to go party on the town. I'm really enjoying it. And uh, she's like, well, I have to pack, go home and see mom and dad. And he goes, I'm excited to meet them one day. And she's like, yeah, they thought maybe it was going to be this weekend, but you're so busy. And he's like, yeah, I'll call you later. And uh, he's like, I'll call you, I promise, and hangs up. And then he goes, ah. And then he goes, ah, I almost said I love you, but I didn't. Why didn't you cry? Are we going to see the first I love you? Or are we going to see like a fake I love you? Because remember, he knows the camera's there. Like, listen, you're not going to tell me Craig's like, it'll look good on camera if Paige sees me and goes, I almost thought I loved her, but I didn't. Oh, I didn't realize the cameras were here. Hi. Oh, did you get that little? <laughs> and then we back to Shep and Taylor. He goes, Taylor, um, Taylor goes, what are you guys doing tonight? He goes, we're going to Queen Park Social to bowl at seven and then there's like like seven no he goes eh, there's like seven or eight bars close to the hotel so we're gonna have fun and she goes okay have fun and you know like he's a little tentative and he goes taylor what am i gonna do are you crazy that's another huge trigger like i've always been told you're not supposed to call women crazy in a talking head 
Shep's like, she's definitely skeptical of our time apart because of my past. We get that flashback to the reunion where he's like, Andy, I kissed a girl in a stairwell. But then he goes, I'm over it. You know, I'm over it to Taylor. And he goes, I need five minutes and tells the camera. Shep forgot the first rule of reality shows that your mic pack is still on so we can still hear you. So he goes into the room with the mic pad and he's like, I said it over and over again. I'm not going to stop going to places and doing things. And then we kind of vaguely hear Taylor go, I get anxiety. I'll never be that woman who's left because of a wandering eye. And then he goes, oh my God, how many drinks did you have? And she's like, none. And he's like, that's absurd scene that's another bad thing you don't like immediately tell somebody they're drunk halfway through when they're cleaning your apartment you told them to get forts and you're like you're lit you're loaded it's like it's it's very defensive even if you you know like i know he meant to say and i don't want to make excuses for him but he's like come on but instead he goes how many how wasted are you and he goes i'm not gonna sit here and defend myself for the rest of my life because that's a surefire way for things to end with me at least and He's like, Taylor, I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. And we get a shot of just a hallway, just a hotel hallway. Very sad, very. And I'm like, oh, man, they're, they're definitely not. And this is when I was like, oh, man, they're definitely not together. They're going to be like, it's like, well, this has been brewing. We all we all saw this coming. I think at the end of the day, I was kind of hoping Shep was like acting. And then we're going to see like an engagement at the end of the season. I mean, you know, so we cut to Craig uh, is at a bar. He's talking to the bartender because he's Craig. He's like, uh, uh, you got, do you like pillows? He's like, I'm meeting some buddies down here. Can I look at the cocktail me menu? And he's like, one Alice in Wonderland, please. And he's like, our buddy sold his home here for a goodbye tour. And the, the guy, the bartender's like, I don't give a fuck. And Shep comes in. He's like, obviously, Craig's holding court. And, he, and Craig's like, taste this, Shep. It's called Alice in Wonderland. And Shep goes, oh, obviously, yeah. The guy, of course, loves Disney. And then Craig goes, that movie freaked me out. And Shep's like, I loved it. It's about people on mushrooms. And they all laugh. And he goes, uh, where you been? And Shep's like, on mushrooms, tripping my balls off. Shep, please do mushrooms with me, bro, please. And he goes, no, I just been relaxed. And I talked to Taylor. And then he goes, sir, I know what I'd like, the maddening crowd. And by the way, that's the first time uh, you're going to hear. No, he goes, I know what I want, sir, the maddening crowd. And I was like, that's the first time you're ever going to hear Shep say that. I know what I want. <laughs> it's a drink. I know what I want. Not a full relationship, but a drink. And uh, he says, uh, you know, Craig takes him in. And I guess his legs like, you know, fidgeting a lot. You're like, your legs going a little more than usual. Are you everything okay on the home front? And this is where you can tell they have a real relationship because you do notice shit like that about your buddies of like, wow, your legs going a little crazy down there. He's like, yeah, you know, you know, she said, you know, you be good. And, you know, was she joking? And he's like, I just, I can sense Taylor's angst. And Craig's like, there's always going to be the case with scars of infidelity in relationships. And I'm like, damn, sometimes Craig just nails it. And Chef just stares ahead. In a talking head, he goes, Taylor's anxious when you leave town because you cheat on her, Chef, when you leave town. And is she just supposed to be okay with that? I was like, damn, this has got to be hard to hear. But you got to hear it from your friends. And uh, Chef's like, if there's going to be a problem every time, then there's going to be a problem. <laughs> I'm not going to be with her dumb butt. And Craig says, if I was her, I would need a step from you to regain your trust. And he's like, that was a year and a half ago. And uh, he's like, if I haven't already, I never will. You know, only time will tell. And uh, Austin walks in. He's like, and they're like the beer baron himself. And Austin says, I love this. You guys spending quality bro time together. And then he goes, drinks are on me. Cause I just told us, I just sold a ton of beer. And then he's like, uh, but well drinks, not premium. Okay. No, he goes, um, yeah. Yeah, it went really great. Um, and having a beer in this market is top. It's like one of the top states. And then he lets us know a big business. I was like writing down this down like in business. He goes, you prove yourself in the bigger markets and then you get to move on. And I was like, that's how it works. Whoa. Um, and then he's like, let's do a shot to celebrate. And then Craig orders three lemon drops or no Shep does. And he goes like some vanilla and then Craig goes, Shep, you want to talk about your thing with Taylor now or later when you're drunk? And, and you know, Austin's like, what thing? 
And then, oh, I just had a combo with Taylor. And then they do the lemon drop to Austin. Thank you, gentlemen. It's just boys being boys. Let's do hand jobs in a corner. We cut to ladies going out. It's Catherine and two of her friends, Amy and Christy. And this scene is just weird. It's just they're basically all getting hammered, like kind of hammered. Like Catherine orders a tequila shot with a pineapple back, a bourbon Coke, and a bottle of rosé. Madison walks in. So this scene, we only get a couple pieces of interesting information at all, but basically that they're just girls out on the town. And uh, that's when I was like, where's Chubbs been this entire episode? Like, we're just not going to, Chubbs is just gone. But then we saw see him in a preview for next week. Madison says, we have three beautiful he- he- women here to the waitress. Bring us some men. And Catherine goes, bring us some big spendas. I hate when people go spendas. And um, they're like, what's your type? And Catherine's like, historically speaking, I don't have a type. But just somebody who's loyal, kind eyes, fit enough. And looks like they care about their health. And I'm like, I'm out. Madison says, and someone who can pick me up. And Catherine's like, like, I've never had that before. I want tall, dark, and handsome. And then she uses Hayden Christensen, Mr. Darth Vader himself, as a, like, Hayden Christensen? Like, what is going on, man? I feel like I do not know how to read people anymore. Hayden Christensen? Um, So, uh, so Madison lets us know that, um, that she told Austin about getting engaged and that Austin told Madison, you're picking the wrong guy. And Madison goes, Oh God, only you would say that. I mean, what do you have to offer me besides some ramen in a trap house? No, that's a great line. It's so great that I almost think she didn't read it. Ramen in a trap house. Damn. With a mattress in your kitchen. Boom. We find out though, Madison's beau lives in Sacramento. He's bi-coastal. He's Mormon. And they're not moving in together until they're married. And she's like, when he told me he was Mormon, I was like, do I have to wear those Mormon special undergarments? I don't even wear panties. And he also said, before we get married, no sex. And he said that he's taken her vibrator. And and girls are like, sex is self-care. And she's like, yeah, that's how I get through the weeks off. Which, dude, come on, man. Even the vibrator, like, what is, does the Bible say anything about, like, toys? Like, was electricity even invented in that era, in that time frame? Do you know what I'm saying? Um, one it it makes i mean is that that's not cool like i I mean like i get like the sex thing potentially if that and i'm not like that's your thing and chris you know all good but like then to tell somebody they can't even have a vibrator like i need to know more what theologians say about this because i feel like the vibrator like let it like are you that like domineering like or is that like and it just doesn't you know what i'm saying like is she allowed to like touch herself without a vibrator or is like anywho that's probably not this is a family show, folks. We are now at the Queens Park Social Bowling Alleys. Just boys doing shot, 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 shots. We meet Whitley, Shep's friend. He's there. All the guys order a shot and a beer. I'll tell you, when I do hang out with guy friends, you always got to do a shot and a beer. Because then they're like, that's a man, dude. And then, dude, uh, if you guys are listening, Shep, you guys ordered five Jaegers. I got to tell you, I still have a taste for Jaeger. I, and I always, the older I get, the more disgusted looks I get from people when I order one, but I don't know. There's something about the cool J and I even, I started doing Fernet Bronca a while. You guys know that. And it's way grosser. And, uh, but Jaeger is still, it calls to me like a sexy siren in the night. Craig then orders a double Red Bull vodka. And I'm like, dude, I've done that, but I do sugar free, uh, because, I care about my health. And they're like, lad, salute. By the way, Shep orders a 11 and a half in bowling shoe. And for his height, I felt like it should be more. I'm a 12 size foot and I'm much shorter than Shep. So I was kind of bummed to find out 11.5 shoe. And uh, Shep goes, I need to get out of a mood. And the waitress says, okay, food, let's do food. And he's like, well, I don't want to use my hands a lot because I'll be sticking my fingers in balls. And they're like, we have salads. He's like, I'm not that crazy. Are you out of my mind? Shep's bowling name is Billy Rose. And uh, they get all this food brought out. And he goes, hey, hey, let's send a pic to Taylor. And he sends like a pic of all the boys smiling. And uh, he's like, we don't stay mad. You know, I love her. I love her. And Craig goes, remember what Shep says. If we avoid the problem, it will go away. And Austin goes, he says that? And Austin's like, yeah, you said that the other day. You know, they both said that he said that. And he's like, yeah, you said if you don't acknowledge she's upset, it eventually will go away. And uh, he's like, Shep's like, huh. But it's kind of like he's that guy that just avoids and eventually 
I would imagine that makes you feel kind of like eventually dumb because you're mad or like you get over it. And then you're like, well, I guess he doesn't care. And then I guess I should get, I don't know. Like, it feels like that would really fuck with me. Um, and, but the guys point out it where Craig does, it doesn't work though, Shep. That's why you're getting yelled at right now. Craig in a talking head says Shep is a one man band. He's a solo performer. Even having a backup dancer on stage would drive him crazy. If people were watching them and not him, he goes where he wants when he wants. And to me, that potentially is the Shep Rose thesis statement. And right now, that's a sad statement because, you know, I guess people, some people like Taylor. I didn't really get a beat on her personality, um, but it's sad when anybody breaks up, you know, like that, that is a bummer. Like it truly is. And Shep says, I just want to have fun. I just want to, I just want to dance. Like, dude, that's my, I didn't want to dance. I want to learn how to dance. And then I want to dance. Craig in a talking head says, Shep is not a relationship guy. He's not cut out for it. And we've seen that over these eight seasons, right? We've seen that. We've seen him run. Relation Shep was a dating show on Bravo one season that I can't believe actually existed now that you think about it. I watched that and he was not uh, a Relation Shep kind of guy. Um, also, I want to bring up one thing that I saw this. I saw this on Demois. I wanted to read this to you guys in um, on so it says on her reveal moi where they reveal things, it says everyone's reposting the media spin on this breakup and making the girl a saint and the man the biggest idiot. Well, this spin is exactly why the relationship ended. And it's not because he's non-committal. Sure, that is true. The breakup is because someone finally wisened up to the good girl's actual agenda, which was to move to Charleston, bag a charmer and get famous. Proof is in the pudding since she's now an influencer and talking to media about her split and how she was the one to end it. Man is very happy to get the gold digger fame mentality out of his life. Like, listen, anybody can send in things to Dumas, and I don't know if that's like friends like trying to stick up for him or any of that, but I just, I don't think she is, I don't think she's a, um, I don't think she was a gold digger at all. Like, I don't know Taylor. I don't, or like I said, I couldn't get a, in fact, I don't even know her last name. Oh, I think I found it. Taylor Ann Green. Is this her? I love that you just type in Taylor and Bravo people pop up. I don't follow Taylor. Um, and she has like 90,000 followers. And um, she posted last on July 4th. She's not posted any stories. To me, that's not an influencer or someone trying to get attention. And I just didn't get that vibe from her. So those reveal moi things, I just didn't get the sense of that, you know? Um so uh Shep's like Austin, look at this, look at this. He's looking at his phone. He's and then Austin's like, bro, Craig, she's sending him paragraphs. And the paragraphs are saying things like, just know I love you and I'm not against you. Please, I'm begging you, don't be defensive towards me. Um, I've got severe anxiety about how I've acted. And, you know, like, listen, dude, that makes a lot of sense. Just know I love you and I'm not against you. Please, I'm begging you, don't be defensive towards me. That's, don't, that makes sense to me, right? Like, I want to be a bro, but that makes sense to me. Like, it does. It's like, you know, when he is being defensive and like a year and a half is not that long of a time after you cheated on somebody. So when you are going out with just the dudes, you know, obviously you have to really bend over backwards a little bit more, you know? And Chef's like, right now, I'm like, don't sink us, Taylor. Don't be the architect of our own demise. You know what I mean? That's the worst. And it's just like, oh, man, you're blaming Taylor for this. And it's like, if you guys could just understand together, I feel like this could be solved. But at the end of the day, it will never be solved because at the end of the day, Shep doesn't want to be a relation in a relationship. You know, I truly believe that now. Austin says, once you stray, that the trust is broken, he says, it's in a talking head. And it's an ongoing battle. And Taylor has proved that this will go on forever, which I think is, you know, proved this will go on forever. What has it been? A couple, you know. Madison, let me remind you about Austin. Remember when Madison had two girls in his room and he was at his little tidy whities and his boner, he kept trying to push his boner down. He's like, Madison, what are you doing here? Madison, these girls fell into my bed. Madison. Like, that's the way to give yourself a hemorrhoid, Austin, by the way. Shep goes, oh, I got to go get some cash. And they're like, where's Shep? And we see him in a bar talking to a girl. And he goes, hey, 
you ever wound up and woke up in jail? And the girl goes, yes. And he goes, me too. And he smiles like this beautiful smile. Chep is very charming. He's like, yeah. And that to me is the life that Chep wants to, to live. You know how exciting it is to meet somebody at a bar and have somebody say, you know, you're kind of crazy or you want to do, have an adventure tonight. That's in Chep's head. I'm telling you, it's like the beat poets and all, or he thinks of himself in that kind of way. And, uh, Austin goes, what did he tell you about Taylor? And Craig goes, not the truth. And Austin's like, yeah, but she's texting saying, you're going to cheat on me again tonight. Like she's super insecure. And Craig says, what, what's happening is that Taylor only thinks it's a camp campfire. But what Shep's freaking out about are that there are landmines and accelerant and gasoline. So if you keep stoking this campfire, it's going to explode. By the way, really, I really love credit. That's a very descriptive, the accelerant and gas. Like, I also, it, it was so descriptive that I almost think Craig might be a pyromaniac. I was like, can, can we look into his area of town if they're just like burned down buildings? Like, we've not caught the mast, you know, like there's always been pillows left behind at the scene of the crime. And uh, Austin's like, do you think it'll explode? And Craig's like, you know shit. I know shit. Everyone knows shit except Taylor and Shep we see do a shot with the girl and in the show next episode Austin's going do you remember me mom jumping out of my childhood window and then we see Catherine not inviting Vanita to her party Shep eating oysters uh Austin saying that um Catherine's dog has a big old dick and then we see Chubbs and John Pringle back why couldn't Pringle and Chubbs be invited on this trip and Chubbs is like, yeah, I guess I do feel like I've been gaslighted by Catherine. We see Madison come into the party and, and he's like, oh no, Austin's like, oh no. And Olivia's like, why do you care? No one. And then Austin's like, no one I'm interested in will ever be friends with her, which is just, and Olivia goes, wait, I'm waiting for the day for you to stop caring about her. Boom. Bapa do, bapa dee. -e. Are we gonna see Shep? Like, are they gonna break up on camera, or did this break up just at, like you'll? I, I beg you to go back now and listen to that interview. You just did actually, but go back and listen again because you can really. I don't know. I'm just so curious where his head's at uh, now and after this, and if we're going to see. Obviously, we're gonna see more issues building up this season. So you guys, this is another, another Southern Charm recap. I love this show still so much and I love talking about it. So I hope you guys love listening to it and watching it on YouTube. I appreciate you guys. And I'll see you bright and early on Wednesday for another uh, great episode, you guys. Thank you, baddies. Bye. And bye to you, YouTube audience. Bye.